Hey, Antoinette. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Looks like it's just the two of us right now. We got to give, oh, someone else is coming in. Give some people some time. And then... yeah, I saw it come across my um, Instagram uh, via Bernice McFadden. Oh. I was like, oh, I got it. Because I, I love this book. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to I gotta do this. <laughs> oh, awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's a, a classic that I had yet to read. So I was like, it, it has to be a book club selection. Yes. All right. That's awesome. I love when people join us that aren't our our regulars let's see all right there's a couple more i know there's more coming so i'll just give it a second before we get started did you finish talicia i don't know if she can hear me she's oh her audio is connecting she can't hear me yet did Hello. you finish? 658. <laughs> <laughs> you were not joking at all. No, the so funny weird. part is I left my book at work yesterday and I was like, oh my God, I have 190 pages. I cannot not read. So I was like, I'm gonna have to download the Audible. Yeah. So I downloaded the Audible and then fell asleep. So <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. I that's how I was. I was listening. Well, I was actually doing both, like reading it on the e-reader because I typically have like a copy in every form when I buy these books. So um, I did a lot of listening today because I was at work just doing stuff, mailing off stuff. So my headphones were plugged in and for hours I was just going at it, finished about one o'clock. And I hate nope. putting that stress on myself of finishing <laughs> the day like I wanted to finish yesterday, but. Those children, you know, they wouldn't let me be great and do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's this December 1st Wednesday that threw me off. I was like, oh, it's not next week. It's, it's week. soon, right? Yeah, because it's normally not the first of the month. But yeah, the first Wednesday fell on, on the first. So here we are just letting, there's still people coming in. So before I get started, I'll give it a couple more minutes. I think Jess is coming, but I don't. I didn't see her on the um, RSVP thing. But she was, she was, Um, I'm going to text her. Oh, look, she just texted me. Might be a few minutes. Perfect. I'm trying to switch over to my computer, but I'm locked out of Facebook on my computer. So oh, like, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so she'll be a couple minutes late because I was like, I know she finished the book today, too, because we were texting each other like since Monday talking about we were at the same place in the book. And I was just like, this is wild. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm sure more people will come in um, as we go. But we are discussing The Darkest Child by Dolores Phillips. Um, this one was a wild ride. I had it on my list for years. I know a lot of people consider it like a classic. Um, and y'all know sometimes I like to pull classics out and read them with the group. So this one did not disappoint. Definitely a five-star read for me. Um, yeah. And I think I want to say, oh no, she had it. Okay. So she did. So I was thinking that this was her only novel because she passed away, I believe. But there's a sequel that she never finished. I don't know if y'all, if y'all yes, it's a part of the audio book. Yes. And so that threw me off on the audio book because I was listening to it today and that, you know, the end scene when they're on the bus and then all of a sudden it skipped. Like it was like, oh, here's an excerpt from chapter one of blah, blah, blah. And I was like, is something wrong with this audio? Because I was listening to it on Scribe. I'm like, <laughs> is something wrong with this audio? So I kept like replaying it. And then I said, okay, let me take out my e-reader and go to the last chapter to see if that's how it ended. And sure enough, it did. But I was like, am I tripping? Because this book just came out of nowhere. It's like she was on the bus. And then I'm like, what happened? <laughs> like, yeah. we're in a whole nother story. So on my copy, it says, um, here's five chapters of the unfinished sequel. And I was like, oh, great. And then I was listening. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And she didn't get to finish it. 
Yeah, I yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and listen to those chapters, but part of me is gonna be mad that I, it's not gonna be finished. So I'm just gonna be left hanging in the air, wondering what's going on. Um, it was good though. What were y'all's initial thoughts over on the overall book? I thought it was really good. This is the second time I'm reading it. It was really good. I enjoyed it. The Mother from Hell. Another book with The Mother from Hell. It kind of puts me, makes me remember the book um, Perfect Peace. Yes. Yes, that was a Another great mother from Daniel Black. I read yes. that a couple yes. of years ago. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah, she was on another level too. It, it was this mother. I need to pull up my notes, but I, there was just no stopping her with some of the things. Ugh, I, I just can't even fathom like those poor girl. I mean, the girls definitely to me got it harder, much harder than the boys, but like the whole farmhouse thing and it, it was just all bad. Like, I just, I can't even imagine like you know, the mom has obviously been through some trauma, has some mental health issues, some things going on. And it's like that mind, I don't know, that mindset of just got to be on the hustle, make money, do what it takes and putting, sacrificing your children. Like I just, I could never, as a mom, imagine, I would hope I would never be in that place. And it's like, why did she have so many, so many kids to screw up? Right. And then, uh, cause I got some questions online and, um, it talks about like the lack of birth control, right? Because she began to have children long before birth control was even a thing. So there really wasn't, you know, much for her to prevent that. Um, and I, I'm reading these questions and there was a great question that kind of brought up Judy right and how there was so much hate for Judy because she wasn't a mother at all to Judy like those poor kids um Martha Jean was the you know the one that primarily took care of her because Roselle just wanted nothing to do with Judy and there were two things that were brought up in this you know group of questions that I saw um was you know did she hate Judy because she was yet another dark skinned child or did she hate Judy because Judy was like the end all when it came to her ever being able to have children again. So it was kind of like, what was the real issue with Judy? Or maybe she was just at the point where she was tired of, you know, raising kids, especially that young, but it, I, I just, yeah no words no that requires you to get into the mind of a nut right <laughs> which i can't even remotely get uh -huh. close to because i just the things that those poor children i mean nobody was safe like nobody um and then some of the habits that like and the mindset of the kids like i think about martha jean and wanting the attention of this grown man and just so easily gravitating towards him with like no fear like she just was in awe of him oh, there's just um from the jump with no hesitation was like I like being around this guy and so you know part of me wonders if that is from watching her mom and the way that she deals with men hey Jess oh. um yeah Roselle was quite a character she <laughs> I have honestly no words. From, I think she fell for Velman partially because he was so nice. He was so kind to her right off the bat. Yeah. And he and was then, an escape. He got her sister out of there. So she's like, man, that could have been me. Right. And had this like love for her brother-in-law. Like she's like, come rescue me too. I need you too kind of thing. And I think just the kindness because he never really... I mean, it is creepy that he was dating Martha Jean in general, but like he never really, he was kind to them. I felt like, like buying the code and stuff for Martha Jean because she was cold and stuff like that. Like I, you know, the whole age difference was creepy, but at the same time, I still felt like he was super kind to them. Um, and he's probably one of the few in their lives that as far as men are concerned that 
was kind to them. So, um, do you think he felt sorry for her though because she couldn't hear? Probably that probably had a lot to do with it. Um, yeah, it. But I think he just had a sheer attraction to her because he didn't know when he rolled up on them that she couldn't hear. That's true. Yeah, he just thought she was beautiful. Thought she was mm-hmm. pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think um, Tangie was more of the mouthpiece at that time. Like she was so defensive, so she was the one who was doing most of the talking. Like, don't talk to her. Like, <laughs> my baby sister. Like, go back to the post office. Go and and do what you do. But like, um, yeah, and then just um, what was I gonna say? that scene, like Martha Jean to me, well, I'll ask y'all this question. Who do y'all think of the children who had it the worst? Cause I feel like they all had instances where they got it pretty bad, but of all of them, boys and girls, who do y'all think got the worst treatment? I think Martha Jean got the worst because she didn't even really know what was going on and she was being attacked. Yeah, that beating was mm. brutal, like. But she, Brutal. but then she, she branded Tangie. Mm-hmm. Wow. I was gonna say like Tangie didn't have like, to me a beating that was as bad that I can think of as that one time that Martha Jean got that real bad one. But there was little things here and there, like taking her to the farmhouse and just she was you just know, cool. I threat- mean, thre- I- yeah, threatening her with you know taking school away from her and stealing her money that she got from her dad. And I was like, I would have kept that shit tucked in my damn sock. She was probably (laughs) most psychologically abusive to Tangie because of of her skin color and and her being smart and all of that. She was just, but I mean, I I was thinking about it as I was reading this book. I've I've read books that have had a lot of violence or abuse and whatever, but this one, it, it would be like a few little instances here like every chapter I'm like what is she gonna do now like right. every time every time they would turn their backs it's like oh god what is she about to do what is she about to do oh and then awesome. it was like all these different situations and the fathers and then you're discovering like okay the sheriff is is this guy you know sam's father yeah. and then the, the neighbor who's been <laughs> helping you out this whole time is is your father and i'm like oh my god i, I was literally Hooping and hollering, and Me I, I too. could hear, I could hear like the ether music when when <laughs> Tara was sitting there. She's like, "Yeah, remember Mr. Frank came? The, you know, he he was the only man who never tried to touch me. Whatever, I could just hear the Nas ether music in the background. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, she is ruthless. But that was her yeah. secret weapon. You know? It was like there's no man that was untouched, right? <laughs> And her she was with Pearl all the time, eating the woman's food, drinking her oh, liquor. <laughs> and right. With us. I was like, not Mr. Frank. Right. Oh, gosh. Yeah, because he was so kind to them, but it kind of makes sense now why yeah. he was willing to be so helpful. It's because, yeah. like, that's my child at the end of the day. And honestly, I my brain kind of froze at that part I'm like when they were on the bus and it was you know her and Laura and I was like wait a minute there's another younger sister but I forgot she was with them um that yeah. just popped back in my mind so she yeah. had a place but yeah she it, probably ended up getting out better than anybody else did really by going well, to live with her dad yeah mm-hmm. mushy was quite a character too I'm like mushy was. <laughs> yeah he was something else i'm like you're supposed to be the savior and like the first he- time you're here you're like let's go to a party and get drunk let's and let's drunk. you know <laughs> underage drinking and all <laughs> and then you, like, the next time you come back you're drinking with your mama it's like right. well, well look who raised her yeah 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 and I, I don't know if they ever said like the age difference but i well they did say that people used to think mushy and rosie was much was the old yeah, so I figured yeah. there's probably she's probably very young when she had it. So I think uh, wasn't she 13 or 14 when she had her? Okay, maybe so. I think so because Mushy was the oldest, and I think yeah. her mom threw her out when she was 13 and got pregnant. So they're only 13 years apart. So it okay. could be like a big sister. Mm-hmm. And honestly, her hair started getting gray. Right. 
like what is happening to you and it's like uh duh she's getting older with age um was martha well i guess i was gonna say terabelle also at some point got pregnant too right but martha jean was really the only one that had a kid right, right. Or, or a few of them yeah um, i don't think she ever sent her to the farm house how are you going to be a prostitute that can communicate with um your johns or whatever they don't need to communicate <laughs> right <laughs> but i Not think verbally. she said something about like nobody wanted martha uh jean because she was dumb she kept calling her the, dumb the and then andy was just too dark so i think that you know they kind of like handicapped or the people probably actually felt bad for her they probably had some kind of guilt and shame not to <laughs> as nasty as those men were they they wouldn't have met it wouldn't have met uh, that whole scene with the lawyer ugh, like <laughs> that was just it was a little much i was like I don't and the mom the so she took her that was the first trip to the farmhouse and she kept telling her, like, be nice to this guy, be nice to this guy, because it was oh, Sam's yeah. Sam's way of getting out or whatever. Um, and I just like, you just sent her in there just blind, right? Like, only words of wisdom were be nice to this man, like, no, like gave her nothing. I would have been traumatized. Like, you know how much worse that would have been if that had happened to Tangie May? It did. The mother, the mother, not Tan. I'm sorry, saying the wrong name. Martha Jean. Martha, oh, yeah. The mother, the mother. I mean, the other kids did try to communicate her with in their own way. They did communicate with her. My mother didn't know how to communicate and didn't want to. So yeah. that would have been worse if she had took her there and you know, <laughs> just dropped her off and been like, okay, go inside. <laughs> like, and not maybe explain to her, you know, what was going on. Yeah, but, but do you think she really thought Martha Jean had a use for herself? You know, because all her kids had some type of use for her. You know, so, Martha Jean was the, was raising the children. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Uh, Judy or whatever the baby's name is, like right. that was her role. I mean, it might have been her first or big um, thing that she did in helping the mother because they all did and something. She was but cooking too, wasn't she cooking also responsible for cooking? Yeah. Yep, but she was the dummy. Yeah. <sighs> that was just hard to watch or read. Like, I don't even know. I, I think, I'm trying to think of what the worst, I think for me, Tangie's first experience with that lawyer was like one of the most graphic scenes to me. And then when Martha Jean was beat to a pulp, like that was mm -hmm. pretty bad. And, um, the, and the, the Judy scene, even yes. though it wasn't like, yeah. 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 it was just, I was like, no. Well, mine didn't. was um, when the guy beat Tangie trying to get her in line for her mother. Chad Lowe. Mm -hmm. Chad, oh. Yeah, I didn't like him at all. Yeah. yeah. There were a lot of brutal scenes. A lot. Yeah. I really, honestly, I'm sure that I'm, I don't know if I've ever read a book that had that much in it. Oh, they um, like Game of Thrones or something like that. <laughs> right. And it was beautifully written. Her it was. Her yeah, use of yeah. words. I was like, wow. So she Just must have been sick ways. when she was writing the sequel because the sequel was boring. I mean, it's, I know she didn't, I know she didn't finish it. Was it was like a recap getting <laughs> the But it wasn't even a good yeah. recap. It was like, yeah, I remember when she branded me and she made me go to the farmhouse. It wasn't like, yeah, yeah. So she must have been sick and I don't know I don't, I don't know but I was just like well, remember if she was just writing the book that was probably like a rough draft don't yeah. they don't people read it was only, the yeah. editors no 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 there was nothing did you it, <laughs> that book that sequel is so dry I'm sitting there like what oh my God. <laughs> you know hey, y'all are hot mess one. when I opened up this yeah. book and you know she talked she that mom i mean she was crazy maybe because they took out the craziest person you know <laughs> towards the beginning because i actually felt like there was something to like about most of the characters but i couldn't find anything to like about um 
whatever the, whatever the mother's name Roselle. Ro uh, Roselle and yeah. then Pearl had the nerve to say because I kept saying why is Pearl her friend like why does she even like her and she had the nerve to say like well you guys should be thankful because you know at least she gave you life and she kept you and I'm like but who wants that kind of life though like right right but she was odd because she never wanted them to leave her and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, well, you've got to love your children if you never want them to leave you. But like you said, she served a, a everybody served a purpose for her. Well, mm -hmm. and that might have been something that had that wasn't explored enough. It's like other than her strained relationship with her mother, did we ever know like what her origin, like what's her villain story? What turned her into this awful person? Oh, I think oh, it's it's just awful from from because the, the grandmother said something about like the way she was conceived it was mm -hmm. from like being raped and then she That's was right. born with like dead mm -hmm. gray eyes so in mm -hmm. her mind she you know she of probably course. was spitting bible verses at her and Rizelle probably was like looking at her with cold stares and yeah she probably tried to kill her too i wouldn't be surprised that was a killing machine that girl yeah. <laughs> and that's why she came up with all those spells to keep her away <laughs> right i mean how many people did she kill because i'm i'm still holding her responsible for junior's death because she she was all mm. up in that mix you know whether she directly did anything to him she surely didn't try to stop it and then held on to that secret what i read um one of these questions it just said that roselle quinn was the child of a rape which left her mom permanently injured mm. um oh that's probably why she had that hump in her back so that yeah that I think is maybe what kind of started, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as her being partially responsible for Junior's death, I think she was doing what she was told. And in those times, you don't go by defying those white people when you were black. Right. I don't know. She was too. She was too close to that mix for me, acting like she ain't know nothing. He should have came back as a ghost and did something to her. <laughs> mm -mm. I know the whole while that I was reading it, I kept thinking, she's bipolar. She's got to mm -hmm. be bipolar that you can swing from being nice to being that way that and quick. Bugs. Which shows, I felt, yeah, that bugs. bugs. That's too what yeah. led me to believe that she had some type of mental like thing going on, which. She was a hot mess, man. I, I had to Google it. It's called delusional parasitosis or something like that, where people feel like they have bugs crawling on them. That's a real thing. Oh my they god! Said it, it's a real thing. They said it could be related to drug abuse, but and also mental illness. Some some type of. It's a real thing. I, I googled yeah. it. I said, "What illness is <laughs> bugs?" Wow. Yeah, it's a real thing. <laughs> The way that her mother talked to her and as nasty as she was, I could imagine that even when she was at home, it was kind of traumatic, very traumatic being there with her mom. Yeah. Yeah. And she hurt just, people are hurt people. Right. And I was going to say she wasn't loved properly and therefore didn't know how to love her kids properly. And like her whole life was about survival. Um, and did what it takes and her her children were sacrificed in many instances for that for like a couple of dollars sam, it seemed like she loved sam though yeah like yeah. she had a soft spot um yeah the boys to me seemed to just have it way easier than the girls did like i felt so bad for the girls and she was hoping that if she got pregnant again like that it would be a boy so for me it was like there's something about men and maybe it's her like having daddy issues and the lack of and you know not having good men and there's something about her that just yearned for that love be it her sons or whatever but I think that's why they got better treatment at times was because you know well, and, and probably at some point just the sheer physicality of a man over her you, you can't beat on those eventually that man's gonna fight back that's true that's true. And so she probably didn't take out as much on them as she felt like she physically could with the girls because they were a better match for her. That was just a thought that I had. Like she would she would do awful things to them, but not nearly yeah. as brutal. It's yeah. that whole thing, you know, you know, women raise their daughters and love their sons. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yeah. I can totally relate to that because that's how it is in my family. And I was talking to my grandmother over the Thanksgiving holiday and she's like, I don't understand what's wrong with the men in the family. And I said that exactly to her. And she was like, well, uh -huh. you're not wrong. I'm like, yeah, that's why they, they all ain't shit. So, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and then I kind of liked Terrible, like in an odd that. way, because yeah. she gave Roselle a run for her money. To me, that was like, yeah, I'm gonna show you kind of thing. The whole I'm a fit, I'm a fit oh, what? yeah, I'm a fit. No, that was that was mushy. That was mushy. That said, I'm yeah, the fit. older one. But yeah. she found that box with, and was like, "What is what is this in here?" And all that hair in there, and I was like, <laughs> "That was crazy I, to me." I think like, my favorite part was when she was like, "Go ahead," when she was talking to Harvey, and she's like, "Go ahead and hit me because I want to know what it feels like to kill somebody." And I was like, "Oh my god, terrible!" <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hell, like, she tried to kill her mama. About to take no mess. Right. Yeah, and I think that's why I liked her because she was really the one of the few that would actually stand up to her mom. Um, so was she really gay or was that just something her mama was saying because she couldn't really control her? What was the term that she used? Because I was dang. Bull dang. Yeah. Bull dang. <laughs> Whatever. What well, did she, she say back in the day? Yeah, well. I, didn't, I don't remember seeing any evidence of that. Me neither. Me either. I think I mean, she's just saying mean. that. Yeah, I think I, the mom just throws stuff out there and any way to kind of tarnish her kids' names. If and that's not. after Tara Bell, remember that's after Tara Bell left her. She wasn't yeah. making her no more money. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. She just did anything to hurt her kids. Like, you're not serving me anymore, so why not? I can't even imagine. <clears throat> you looking and for the name? So <laughs> she was so horrible that when Tangie tried to stand up to her and tell her she wasn't going with her to the fair map, farmhouse she went and dressed up laura like she was going to take mm -hmm. her there and she because she knew that was going to make her say no i'll be the lamb mm -hmm. right everybody's like nah it's that time of the month man i ain't i i right, can't everybody. do it me too like nah me too it's, it's... they should have taught laura <laughs> right like, what the girl? she's like what's that right <laughs> i'm like bro you, you gotta learn, but 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 as as cruel as she was, I was surprised she didn't check. You know, right, right. And I was I was thinking I was like, oh, she's about to check them and see if they really are. And then she's gonna beat them. <laughs> right. She didn't beat have to blood. do that. She knew what to do. She yeah. knew exactly what to do. She sure did. Yeah. It's like all I gotta do is this. And then there was that spurt at the end where Roselle was actually kind of nice to them, and everybody was just like where's this coming from kind of thing and they were just waiting for her to turn into her old ways but well they were truly abused because I think even at one after her mom died and she was crying and Tangie was like mama I love you I won't leave you I won't and I'm like girl what are you doing <laughs> like don't get this little sympathy right now <laughs> they still had a soft spot for her you could have my hair. Laura said that Laura and the little girl said that Laura and Agnes said she could have their hair and then she actually mm. scalped them one day. I guess they really that felt was horrible. Like at some point they could do something to make her love them and not abuse them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all yeah. abusive kids. They love they love their their abusers. They do. Their parents. A part of me questions too, like the fathers though, knowing how Roselle was like nobody, even the neighbor who we now know was the father of one of the kids, like nobody tried to save them or rescue them from Roselle. Like mm -hmm. they just kind of let it be or would be in and out of the picture. It was crazy. I think back then people were, more, were allowed to be more abusive they felt like then it was your child and you do pretty much what you want. There were no police checking for abuse and all that kind of stuff back during those times. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah. I mean, I think the sheriff, as you know, he wasn't the worst, but he did. I think he kept Sam from getting killed. He did. He definitely protected him um, in some kind of way. Um, there was a question here. 
that, hang on. It was a question that just kind of posed like, hold on, sorry. I'm reading this there right here because it's a long question, but um, like if maybe, because he kept denying Sam, right? And they're wondering like, is it because of the embarrassment that people would know that he was dealing with Roselle? Because I think a lot of people and that's probably why a lot of the men were distant too, is just not wanting to deal with this crazy chick. I don't know. She must have been putting it down or something because. <laughs> <laughs> she said that at one point. I think she was, they were trying to, somebody was trying to take, was it Tangie somewhere? She's like, well, can't nobody do it better than me. Right. <laughs> she said, I was like, oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. That was one instance where they were like, the mom was competing. What was the guy? I can't think of his name, but Tangie, they were like, the mom was like messing with him and Tangie oh, was, yeah, or no, what was the- No, it wasn't Bellman. It starts with a C. Chadlow? The dude that beat her up, that oh, beat- Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, him, like the mom, they were both messing with him. He wasn't really a police officer. Uh -uh. Right. They right. just let him be a vigilante going in, in the prison and roughing people up and stuff. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, well, so back no. then, you could do pretty much whatever you wanted to do with Black people. Nobody was going to convict you or you weren't going to get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, they let those white people in that jail to beat Sam's ass. Yeah, Which really I killed. also found interesting. They, beat them, they would have yeah. killed him. The fights that they had, like that Tangi and Rosie and who was it, Becky had with, with they the was fighting them, the cars. white people. I was like, hold on. <laughs> like, you can get killed for this. What are y'all doing? <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess it's survival of the fittest. When Sam um, retaliated on them, that's when they got him and threw him in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I think the I think those white guys didn't tell. That would have been too embarrassed. Who's going to tell that a bunch of that three black women jumped you? But they they mm -hmm. got Sam though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they found a way yeah. to to get him back. Which at first I Sam, thought they would. I, Go ahead. First, I thought they were just going to try to pin it on Sam because they were too embarrassed to say that it was the women. Mm -hmm. But Sam was like, no, I threw the brick. I he did. Sure was. He was like, yeah, I'd be dead. Yeah, he was, was like, like oh, you know, she can hurt me, but you're not going to hurt my mom. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then Sam tried to burn, burn their store down. And oh. as a retaliation, I was like, bro, he is yeah. looking to die, man. <laughs> he was not playing he's like i don't care like and then he just disappeared right like never you had to that yeah. it came back he's been dead and what happened to handball good question went away too didn't he i After think they kind of had to yeah at the fair mm -mm -mm. um so like in the beginning of the book, this is like, I really thought that Roselle was like dying. Like that whole scene of her, like I'm dying. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's in labor the whole time. Like, <laughs> I'm like, this one right here is just so out there. Has everybody thinking that she's on her deathbed, but she's really pregnant with. <laughs> and I want, I mean, she had to have known that, right? I mean, you've carried children well, Tara knew. Tara was like, ain't no wrong with her. She had to have that baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tara became my favorite. I was like, okay. Yeah, I like her a lot. I liked her. Kind of makes you think, though, like, even just, like, back in those times, before there was true um, diagnosis and just things like that, even just going back to, you know, slavery and times and all the shit that black people have been put through and just like there's really no cure or no you know diagnosis for that kind of stuff and it's like crazy to think about like we have so much now that can tell us what's wrong or help us try to fix it but can you imagine like just being in a state of depression or having these mental issues and not really know what is going on with your body it's in insane and back in the day with slavery, I mean, even going back to there, I could imagine there were a lot of depressed people. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I can't even fathom like how I honestly I wonder like what the the suicide rates were like back then because I can imagine that people took themselves out or you know had someone else take them out because they were just over it so I'm you know when I read about slavery you really don't we know that started on the slave ships where some of them chose to jump over right rather than uh, keep going that's it so I can't even imagine like once they got over to this side and knew what they were up against, like truly how many of them committed suicide. That would actually be an interesting read, something I would be fascinated to read because you really don't, when you read history books, like that's not really discussed. I don't think I've ever read a book where suicide during slavery or anything like that was. Um, because in order to commit suicide, you have to be human. They were not considered human. They were considered property. That's so if they, they they were damaged or they whatever, they wouldn't have recorded that as they would have never thought of calling that suicide. Well, yeah. you know, that's what and that's what Toni Morrison said. That article that inspired her to write Beloved. There was a debate. The mother who drowned her child, whether the 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 courts whether they were going to charge her with murder or destruction of property because they didn't want to charge her with murder because that was acknowledging that her child was a human being. Wow. Yep. That's insane. And that, and that newspaper article that she found, that's in that, what's that documentary? This, whatever the one that, about her. Um, yeah. She talks about that, that she just found this newspaper clipping and she just kept it. And then that was what inspired her to write Beloved. But, but that they... They literally did not want to charge her with murder because that meant you can't murder property. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's crazy to think about. Like, but it also makes me wonder, like, since we're talking about slavery and stuff, like what really was your motivation to wake up every day and continue to do this? Because for me, I'm like, hell, I mean, for me, suicide probably would have been heavy on the mind because at the end of the day, the white man's losing money if i die can't sell me can't do anything with me if i'm dead right you're losing a worker so you're losing profit by that so it's honestly and that's why like the resilience like black people just amaze me because the strength and stuff that they just to keep trucking on through these types of circumstances it's it's mind-blowing to me and i think that's why like a lot of people have such a hard time reading slavery but for me I see it from a different perspective of just, I want to learn, but it's fascinating to me that like, we're that strong to be able to go through the shit that we've gone through. Uh, it's. And I see it as it's, our, it's, it is our history. It's a part of our history and us and us, regardless to whether people want to acknowledge it or not. Yeah. It happened. Right. You can't put your head in the sand and pretend it didn't. It happened. And that's me. Like I grew up in the suburbs going to, you know, mostly white schools. Do you think they were teaching this us this stuff in in high school and stuff? Like, no. We were reading Lord of the Flies and dumb shit like, you know, <laughs> like that. It was like, you know, and that's the outsiders. The yeah. That's still the case. That's still the case. It's still, yeah, they still not trying to teach it to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause I know a lot of a lot of the um, you know, on the come up, Angie uh y'all know who I'm talking about but a lot of her books are banned Tiffany D. Jackson like a lot of their books are banned because they don't want these kids Jason Reynolds yes Mm -hmm. did you see the post yesterday so he bought out all of the banned books that were on the banned list in bookstores in um Texas and let people just come and get them (gasps) I love him I I know he's I know he's your man for so many reasons yeah (laughs) Yes, that's, that's the the audacity to say that you can say what my child is equipped to read. Yeah, right. like if you don't want your child to read it, that's one thing. But banning it from the whole school reading it, right? Talk about right. privilege. Like how are you? How but you, you know that goes back to it? that goes back to uh, systematic racism, right? Like this mm-hmm. structure was put in place to keep a certain group of people out. And when you have these new juniors popping up and spreading knowledge, it's kind of like, oh, we have to find a way to eradicate this. We have to find a way to get rid of this. And I'm just so thankful that I work in a um, urban school district because, you know, they're fully supportive of what we teach and making sure that we are teaching, you know, 
the what I call the new history, right? Because it's not what we were taught at all. Whereas I know some pairs in um, Texas, they or Arizona, one of them, they can get fined five thousand dollars just for speaking about race. You wow. know, and it's uh, like really. For my job yesterday, I submitted a, a comment to our draft social studies standards, and that and that was our, the whole premise of it was we need to teach the truth, and we can't heal from all the wounds that we have if we if we teach a watered down version or something that people don't yes. feel good about. It doesn't matter if you don't right. feel good; it's the truth, right? That's and you like, will repeat it if you don't learn about it. That's the thing. Yes. It's like they just need to get to the point you need to get uncomfortable have these discussions because do you think it was comfortable for black people to go through slavery to grow up in the 60s you know with being discriminated against like it was uncomfortable for us so now you have to live in that discomfort like i'm sorry that's just what it is so and that's part of the reason why i send my nieces they are 12 and 9 and i send them books i bought for them last year um what the history 365 book Yep. That's, that's a, that's a chunk of change right there. But, um, you know, I'm like, I told my sister, I'm like, they need to know. I said, cause we didn't learn this in school. Mm -hmm. We, we didn't know the true history and I didn't learn about some of that stuff till I got to college. Right. You know, exactly. and I went to a predominantly white college and to, you know, when I'm in the African-American history class and most of those kids are white, I'm looking at them like you're in the wrong class. Like right. you shouldn't even be here. This should be full of black kids, but you know we were outnumbered. We were like what two percent of the population. So, yeah, yeah. That sounds that sounds a lot like my experience. High school, college, um, mostly white. Like same experiences. And honestly, growing up playing the sport of softball, where there's maybe I was the only black girl on my college softball team. So. You know, that's just what life was for me playing a, a mostly white sport. Like it's just, and times are changing now, fortunately, like it's, it's very different now, but that's kind of how Book Girl Magic came about was because I was on a mission to just read more books by people who look like me um, and figure out our stories and read our stories and just learn. And so that's kind of been my mission of what I've been doing. And I just... I eat the history up because it's so fascinating to me. I know it's like traumatic and stuff like that, but it fascinates me to learn about our people, like yeah. to know where, where you come from. Like, yeah. And, and I think I if this was taught book. to us, it would be more, it would be more interesting if we were taught like that, you know, if we were taught the real history, the true history, because what we were taught in school, that, that was boring as hell. I could care less about the dates and the white people. I didn't care. I didn't care. Yeah. Yep. Cause I look at my, I have, you know, nine-year-old twins and looking at the tests and the things that they have, I'm like, what the hell we learn about, you know, George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. I don't give a damn about the yeah. declaration yeah. of independence and this tech, like, and I'm like, okay, but what else can we learn? Like there's stuff that we can learn outside of black history month, you know? Mm -hmm. And of course, when we get to that point, it's going to be the typical Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King. Like, <laughs> there's so much more mm -hmm. to it. And it's like, honestly, a couple of the books that I read this past or this month, um, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. Like I read that one. Yes. What was the other one that I read? Um, Did you read Never, Never Caught? Caught? Yeah. Yeah, I read yeah. Never Caught this month and that one was really good. Again, heroic slave women that mm -hmm. were doing something and it was a beautiful thing to read. But yeah, it's just some of the stuff that comes home from school and I'm just like, Oh, just you. fail the test because I don't care. <laughs> I got so angry. I was I was ready to march down the school. My sister is a lot younger than me. She's 17 now. But when she was like maybe sixth grade or something, my mama sent me a picture one day of her in like a Laura Ingalls Wilder, like a you know, what do they call it, pioneer. And it was in February. And I was like, why wait a minute? <laughs> what did she have on? She was like, it was Pioneer Day. I said, in February. Why are they doing Pioneer Day in February? I said, are they right. not Black History? And mom right. was like, I didn't even think about, think about that. <laughs> what is going on? Like, if anything, during February, everybody kind of she they were they they broke the month up. They had the Pioneer Unit, and then they did the Black History Month. I was living. Nah, when my right. mom sent me this picture, like, look at your sister dressed up. Like, I was like, 
why she had that on? Is she supposed wow. to be a slave girl? Like, what did she, why is she wearing that? <laughs> it's supposed she's to be a like, slave girl. She's like, oh no, it's Pioneer Day. What? I said, it is February. <laughs> right. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? They're, 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 they're watering it down. Yeah. You know, on the shortest month already. And then you're still oh. going to just designate it to two weeks. Right. Pioneer Day first, which was a genocide. <laughs> it's like, it's like, what are y'all doing? I'd be oh writing gosh. a letter to somebody. I was so hurt. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, I've got a couple more books, actually, that y'all probably had already seen that I got from my Secret Santa that I cannot, again, on my mission to... Uh, yeah, a lot of people are fascinated by this title and they hadn't heard it before. I had I'm that like, book. I've never read it, Renee. I now have two copies. I got another one today. I was like, I wonder how many people peeped that, that this was the second copy that I got this week, which I really appreciate. But honestly, I can... It, she sent the gift receipt, so all I'm going to do is return it and then go get Kink um because that was the fourth book on my list that I did not get so um and Wench will be a book club collection okay good yeah. I haven't read that one either <laughs> February is this so related I mean not February. related but it's a similar premise of the I think so yes yeah mm-hmm. but somebody February. I was on a podcast and somebody said that this one was really good so I've had it on my list for years so Wench will be February um uh, February's book of the month January is look I'm spilling the secrets now I don't even care um Tabitha is going we're gonna do her book to kind of kick off the new year um oh, Tabitha Brown. it's so okay. good I listened to the audio book yeah yeah so we'll do her um book for January so that's January and February I haven't really gotten much further than that so um but I figured this would be a good one to kick off the new year and kind of a lot of people have enjoyed it so I thought that would be a good one and then we'll go into some heavy stuff um did you ever Four. read Warmth of Other Sons? Oh, yes. Cast? Oh, I read both of them. Yep, I have both of them. I felt so stupid when I read um, Warmth of Other Sons because I just did not know. I didn't put, I didn't know how Reconstruction, where it came in. I, I was just dumbfounded yeah. about some of that stuff I learned when reading that book. Yep. Cast was really good too. Both of her books, but that Warmth of Other Sons was probably like the first better. like book that yeah. I read that was like, this and I think we used to have this group, um, the Buddy B- Buddy Reed Brigade yeah, that had like yeah. Anna, Reggie Reeds, um, Tracy from the Stacks, Jamie, and a couple of other people. But like we used to just do these Buddy Reads every other month, so we picked the warmth of other sons. Otherwise, I don't know how I would have gotten through that if I didn't have like <laughs> someone to read it with because that's a thick one. Like big yeah. books intimidate me, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I just when I look at those things, um, 16, 19 is is. That's why Another I'm one. doing that that buddy read also or I'll say it is a little intimidating those number of pages. Yep. So I'm gonna start that at some point, I guess, this week, because I'm gonna try to do like the two month thing that most people are doing. Mm-hmm. Um what's the other one that I have on my list that's really the big? Print is small in 1619 too. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. E-book, so. I got an ebook, so I'm gonna do the audio. Um, because I'm like I a Libra. A Libro FM influencer, and actually, that was one of the free audio books that they gave us for the month of oh, really? That's cool. November. It's weird. I don't think I really don't think it was there when they sent it out initially in November, but they've kind of gotten off track of like not really having many black books. Like we've gotten on them before, but now they're kind of getting back in the habit of not. So when I went back, it was like I didn't download anything, and then I got an email. You know, they always send out an email like you know, before the month is like the last three days of the month and they'll say, hey, you know, make sure you download your November pick. So I went back and looked in there and I was like, these books weren't on here. Cause I know I would have jumped on 16, 19, like as soon as it, you know, I saw it. But anyways, I ended up getting the audiobook for free. So I'll look at both. Um, there's something, hang on, I'm trying to, oh, I'm trying to do uh, the love songs of W.E. Uh, du Bois. I, oh, yeah, everybody says that's a good one too, but again, it's yes. another long one. And it's if you're, so good. You won't long. even realize. Yeah, you won't realize how long it is. So good. It's um, uh, Jamise from D- Diverse Spine. She announced it as her book club picks for December and January. I had planned on reading it this yes. month anyways. <laughs> so I'm going to join. Gonna think about maybe two months. Yeah. So between that and 1619, those are going to be like 
December, January reads. And then we are not like them because everybody keeps talking about that in the group. Oh, and that's, then, oh that book is so good. That book so is I'm going to read that one. Good. I'm going to start that one tomorrow. Um, yes. And then, of course, our December book of the month. Um, Fun. <laughs> yeah, I really want to. Right. I'm enjoying that book. I'm enjoying that book. That book's really good. You started it I already? I yes. Good. I usually don't care for romance, but you've introduced a couple of books that were really good. This one is really good. I oh like well, it. thanks. You know, romance is my thing. So I <laughs> I y'all yeah. know I love me some good romance, but I try not to like, you know, pile it on heavy. I try to change stuff up. So good. Um, I was struggling this year trying to find books. That's why I asked y'all for help for December because normally I have my books like mapped out six months in advance. And this year I was like, it's just, it's been a struggle for me to read in general. So I'm like, um, I actually read five books last month though. I was proud of myself. I was like, you know, because during the summer it was like one book, one book, which was typically book club reads and I couldn't get through anything. But yeah, needed to add something light, and most people wanted a Christmas themed book, so I gave the people what they wanted. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in another little small local book club, and I'm leading the other black girl next month. And I told them, uh, I said, Y'all, the reviews are awful, but I think we still need to read it. You know, the other black have, girl is awful. A lot That's of people I've have heard. said that. Uh, they I've said seen it a lot. Was too much build up for like 25 percent of the book is the action uh, that's what mm. i've heard but the premise is microaggressions and workplace and all of that that oh i might were, need to read that because i'm tired of these people in their microaggressions <laughs> they were like we need to we still need to read it i was like so don't get mad at me if you <laughs> like the book because i'm leading the discussion <laughs> you're reading that in january uh, in december oh, okay. di- the discussions on december 15th Oh, wow. That's like right around the corner. Mm-hmm. Wow. But I have a flight to California next week, so hopefully you can that, get it in. That'll help me get it in. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of books on my plate. The reason I started the book already is I don't use the read one book at a time. I read like three or more books at a time, so mm-hmm. I read a little bit of each one. Yeah, I used to do that. I just, I've been struggling to read in general this year. So, but I always have to wait. And this has to be the last book of the month for me every time. So I'll finish it right before chat so that it's fresh on my mind. Cause I well, used I, to, when we, when I first yeah. started the book club, like it used to be the first book I would read in the month. And then I'd read like four or five other books. And I'm like, what the hell was this even about? <laughs> I don't know. So I had to get to the point where this is the last book of the month. Um, for me but that's right push it to me push be like me and push it to the last five minutes listen you <laughs> and Keela, Keela, two hours i was about five hours ahead of schedule yeah like i was like I was about, I was about, uh, hour and a half <laughs> right yeah I, i'm the worst but I, tv has gotten in the way a lot um <laughs> Yeah, I was talking you, about the Miss Pat show last month. I've been oh, watching you, it. It's you, you, good. It's good. It is good. Like the yeah, acting is done. bad, but the show is good. <laughs> I need to go back. It's not bad. I mean, it's not yeah, awful. Yeah. yeah. And Tammy, Tammy Rome, I like her. I didn't know she was in there. Very good. Yeah. yeah. She, Tammy was the best character to me. It's funny that y'all say that because I just started watching. Erica was posting about the real world. And I forgot. I started was, watching that. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I just started the first episode. I haven't even gotten halfway through it, but that's funny that y'all started talking about Tammy because I was just yeah. watching it. So I'm wondering if this is going to be a theme of now we're just going to go in order of real world and just I go think back. So. Man, if they get to Las Vegas with like Alton and yep, Michelle and all of them, that. I yep. will die. Oh, and there's and another then- one, New Orleans. What was the dude that slapped that girl in the face? Oh, um, black her, name, her name was Irene, I think, but he's the black guy. I can't think of his name. Uh-huh. And then the Anyways. one with Ruthie. Was that yes. Hawaii? Hawaii. Hawaii. Uh-huh. Yep. See, I used to watch all that stuff. I used there. to watch them too. I watched all, from the beginning through probably probably Las Vegas might have yeah. been. And I might have watched an airline or somebody. Yep, airline and Alton sure. worked together. Uh-huh. For, yeah. Uh-huh. That's yeah. funny how y'all remember these names. I used to watch it, but I don't. When y'all bring up the name, I'm like, oh, okay, oh yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 
the only reason okay. it's so fresh is because now they're doing these challenges and they've done they're doing like an old school challenge where they're bringing back all of those so alton erlon all of these um. people were on the challenge so now there's a second season that just came out the same time as the real world like the, so like the real world road rules challenge they used to yeah okay. like yeah gosh so you I, don't know how long ago that's so right long, long time <laughs> tv junkie um anyways we've gone from slavery to the real world challenge and we, <laughs> <The real> world. <laughs> <laughs> this is how book club goes we just go from uh, one extreme to the other and i love it cool. um any final thoughts about The Darkest Child? I, for me, it was a great read. I'm glad that it was something that I could finally knock off my list. Um, yeah, I do agree that it was a great read. It was a hard, emotionally hard read. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it did have, it had its moments of comic, you know, slightly yeah. comic tongue-in-cheek relief. Uh, and shot, I, yeah. and I, I do regret that uh, Miss Phillips didn't you know, live long enough to, to give us more because I think even with the dry sequel <laughs> to <Leisha. laughs> That would have been better if she had had a chance yeah, to complete it and I ever got involved. I think, I think Y'all so nice. Out, <laughs> I think we missed out on some, on some future gems from her. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. for me, the mother is the one because my mother is, because, you know, we were talking about um, diagnoses, and I think not only was she bipolar, but I also think she was narcissistic as well. Mm. Um, you know, she, because my mother is that, and she, very controlling, very manipulative, um, and my mother does the same thing. And so when I read this book, because my mom was one who actually told me about this book, because she read the book. So when I finished it, I looked at her like, did you not see yourself in the mirror? Do you see yourself in the mirror? Did you see yourself in the mirror? <laughs> like, did you, did you not see yourself in her? Like, really? You know? Um, but yeah, so it's like, wow. And so I, right now to this day, you know, I'm 40 something years old. And it's like, I keep my distance from my mother. Like I only deal with her when I have to. I'm glad that she never did go to the extreme that Roselle did. I could see my mother doing that because she has manipulated and lied to me and my sisters. Um, she has manipulated us out of money. And I mean like serious amounts of money, you know? So wow. I'm like, yeah, I can relate to this. This is some, this is some BS. Cause there was points where I wanted to strangle her. I'm like, yes, I want to do this to my mother, but you know, <laughs> my freedom is a little bit more precious, you know? So um, yeah. yeah, so her not, really saying what this woman suffered from but you could tell you know when you are reading it you know that this woman suffered from some serious mental illness so yeah yeah, yeah. definitely something going on i was a lot i just i can't even fathom like with my own like mm -hmm. hey yeah it's crazy but, you know, I guess when you're dealing with issues and things like that and me mental health issues, you just don't know mm -mm. what a person is capable of. I mean, I have an uncle that had gone through depression and kind of like some sicknesses like that were mental issues. And um, when he's not medicated or back when he wasn't and we first didn't know what it was, it was like, you know, we'd get... Um, calls from like the police and he was in somebody's backyard and was like thinking that saying that he was like a FBI agent like like crazy stuff like that so you just don't know what these illnesses can do to people you know unfortunately like he's doing so much better and is medicated and stuff like that but it's just like you just you don't know mm -hmm. and a lot of times it drives people to do things that they can't recover from you know hurting somebody killing somebody like you just don't know what that can you imagine if you really think that you're an FBI agent and you're chasing somebody down and they're <laughs> for a crime and then you end up killing them and it's like, you know, all kinds of stuff could happen, but yeah. And it, like I said before, I just can't imagine having those types of issues in times where there's no medical cures. You don't even know what it is that you have. You're just existing not even realizing that there is a problem or there's something wrong. Like the, the technology and all of that is not there yet to even diagnose that. So, yeah. But I think this book um, can do one of two things. Like it's, it can be either be relatable as far as what you've dealt with maybe with your parents and stuff like that, or 
have a great appreciation for, you know, you think you're going through some stuff, but then you see this and it's like, oh, okay, maybe I didn't have it as, as bad as I thought, because, you know, so great story overall. Um, I, it's one of those authors that I would love to like pick her brain because sometimes stuff is so far left. It's like, what was your inspiration to like go there with these stories and these characters and like, where did it come from? Because a lot of times these, some books stem from personal issues or things that people have seen. I mean, you know, Tayari Jones will tell you that Amer an American marriage came from her sitting in a mall over, you know, listening, overhearing a couple's conversation. And that's how that book was like, born um so i would this would be an author that i would love to like have been able to sit down and pick her brain and figure out how this concept came about so i always think that those are so fascinating to hear I'm trying to get through one of tayari's books now Let's take which one out. the untelling oh i've not i've not read that one yeah it's uh i mean it's based here in atlanta the two main characters went to Spellman, but um, I don't know. It's just kind of like, well, okay, what's going on here? It's called The Untelling. Look, I'm like another, most of her books now, I'm, I'm learning that take place in Atlanta at some point. Mm -hmm. American Marriage, they were a spellhouse couple, I believe. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's the other one? The, uh, no, the, the other ones with Barrow. Barrow. Oh, yeah. Yes, we read, did we read that See, one? See, I, I like both of those. So I'm like, okay, this third one is kind of, and the one about the Atlanta, the Atlanta murders. Leave it I read that one too. Yeah, it was free. So I, it was free on Audible. So I was like, oh, I'll just download it because I like her as an author. Speaking and, of free, the <laughs> right. first, today is first reads day on Amazon. I know we, we, we left you in the dust. In, in the dark. But I, wait, so I picked my book. Was that for November? Is there a new one now for December? Yeah, for December. So, yeah. yeah, December 1st. <laughs> yeah. And, and you get another, they, they're giving you another free one. If you if you get this month's book, they give you a list of other free ones if you can choose from. Oh, Jesus. Oh, gosh. Don't worry, girl. Ain't none of us reading the book. We got them. <laughs> we, we just got a candle full of books. Nobody's reading them. Oh, get ready to read them. <laughs> That's why every time one. when Renee's like, this is sale, I was like, oh, let me go buy. You bought this book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all don't know how much I've been saving your pockets because I used to post them all the time. And I think yeah. it's either gotten to the point where we have all of the ebooks by now, <laughs> or I just don't post. I don't, I'll buy stuff, but I won't necessarily post it to the group because I'm like, yeah, and I'm trying to save y'all's pockets. But they're like the one, the Christina Lauren I knew was a big one. So I was like, let me post that um that's today because i had been looking at that one what'd you say that, that's what happened to me today when first read was like hey you got a, your first reads book we're good you know for the month of december we're giving you another free one several of them i clicked on i already had them <laughs> <I'm> no. like, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> i've got to have close to like 300 books just sitting on there so now when i want to read something like i'll go back there like somebody was um it was Crystal, Melanated Reader, was talking about Disappearing Acts. I think that's a Terry McMillan mm -hmm. um, book. And she was talking about it on Twitter. And I was like, let me go see if I have that. And of course, I have the ebook. Like, it's, just, it's like, I, if, if anything, I have the ebook at least. Um, but yeah. We'll get to it. I bought a lot too because of uh, um, Black Friday sales and Cyber Monday. Like, Let's see. I got Blood in the Water, Killing the Black Body. Today I bought The Spy in the Struggle, Christina Lauren in a Holiday. So that's four that I bought today alone. Oh, that Beverly Jenkins that I posted in the group that everybody was like, oh, that sounds so good. When bought that. <laughs> you Should See Me in a Crown, The Poison Heart, The X Talk, one of the good ones. I got Act Your Age, Eve Brown, Everything is Fucked by Mark Manson. It's a, a lot of audios, a lot like audios. It just keeps going. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. the personal librarian. Somebody else recommended that in the group. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I downloaded that it. one's good. That one's really good. I've heard. It's, I have it, but I haven't. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's just the eBooks that I buy. It's not including the physical copies of stuff. Sixteen, nineteen. Like I bought that. Yeah, my book budget is blown. I, I ignored the ones you sent to David. Let me go back and look at them. Which ones? 
the the two you the ebooks you sent today. I was like, I'm not. Oh, oh you might you holiday. probably would like that Christina Lauren one if anything. Yeah, yeah. I like her. They're I cool. love the, I love all their stories. I've yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I, I I'm going to end up too. buying it. I I saw it and I was like, no, I don't need another book. Yeah, it's per, I've been eyeing it though because I think it just came out. To be honest with you, I think it just came out for this season. So I think it's a pretty new read. So when I saw that, I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm buying that. But yeah, book junkie. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, ladies, it's been another great book club meeting. Appreciate y'all. Um, coming to talk about the darkest child another great read so i'm looking forward to december's read um which i think will be a good one two authors two stories in one that both sounded good and then of course i gave y'all a sneak peek into 2022 so we'll be doing about to drop the book tabby brown um january and then winch in february so um yeah don't know when I'm gonna find time to read all the other stuff that I have but (laughs) I'm like I got this Alexa Martin like y'all know I normally am right jump on Alexa Martin and I have not read her book yet I haven't read that one either it's pretty it's different from the football series I found it entertaining I liked it it was good that's I think that's what makes me nervous is it's not her typical like rom-com so I'm like eh um but I think I I saw your review but I think I only gave it three stars because I think she ended it too abruptly I wanted more Uh, okay and I think that's where I commented on it I think you either it posted to your Twitter or something and I think I commented and I was like only three stars like that I think is what why I was alarmed I'm like Alexa Martin only got three stars I'm like that makes me scared to read this one hold on (laughs) no (laughs) no um yeah so so many books so little time and then that top 10 list came out today um the new york times bestseller top 10 list and i'm like okay i own a couple of these so i probably 2022 is going to be busy i don't know mm-hmm. i'm already exhausted thinking about these january or december january reads like 16 19 and i just hate books that like linger that long like i just i want to read it and be done with it so oh and let me just say if you don't have the physical copy of will you need to get it because oh paper- yeah mine's up there the pictures in the book are like we my son and I, he was like, I just want to know what Charlie Mack looked like. What did Charlie Mack look like? <laughs> but yeah, Charlie he's a big in dude. the opening of the show. He was the one twirling him around. I, I didn't realize, realize that, that was really okay. My he son, said he only seen one episode. I'm working on him. <laughs> yeah, that probably I'm gonna do my top 10 um reads of 2020, and that will definitely be up there on that. That was incredible like when that person came in the group and was like i don't like this i'm like you're on (laughs) chapter one like you've read two pages of the book and you're expecting it to be my book like he has to get to the build-up and you know but my mind was blown i'm like and y'all you know i love a physical copy and i have the physical copy of will but that audiobook was was everything so good yeah it was so good i'm so glad that i got it I felt like someone was going to say something, but yeah, that was... Yeah, I was just going to say I'm on the library waiting list for the um, audio book of Will. Yeah, oh, wait for it. Wait. It's worth it. It's worth the wait. I yes. That would be the only way that I would do it is audio book. Just because like he raps, there's his music, his kids' music, Jada's music that I didn't know about. Like there's right. so much that he... <laughs> Right. And I'm like, Jada had a whole rock yeah. band. Like, what? So I, I dated a guy. Yeah, she went through a phase. School. I dated a guy in high school, but his his brother plays guitar for that group. Wow. Huh? But it honestly, to me, now hearing that about Jada makes more sense about Willow now. Because she's kind yes. of that punk rock, like, yes. you know, she's got her little song trending on Twitter and stuff like that. It's hilarious. But she started doing, she started doing actually rock. Willow. Yeah, mm-hmm. doing that. and that's where Jada had a band like that too. Yeah, that he'll talk about in the in the book. So yeah, it's very interesting. I, um, I, I love that. But I think I think a lot of my top reads this year were memoirs. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Up I there is back. Rabbit. Mm-hmm. Oh I yeah, Rabbit like was a good one. Sicily. I read uh, the Yellow crazy House. Mama. I gotta read that. I hear that that was good. That's that's on my list to read for this year 
Which Disney one? Tyson. Disney. Yeah. Oh, oh that yeah. was excellent. Dang, y'all are bringing me back to like the beginning mm. of this year because I forgot <laughs> that I even read that. See, mm. I have to go back to my Goodreads and see like what's on my challenge. And that's how I pick my top two because I'll forget. Like, I forgot that I wrote Sicily like that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have Which a hard challenge time. Which challenge are pushing. you doing? Just, I usually do keep track of my um, Goodreads um, or what I read throughout the year. So I don't really challenge myself. I always set my books to 12 so that I hit that goal because for me when I set it high like to 50 or something like that, that gives me anxiety knowing mm. that I'm trying to reach that number and I'm not constantly reading to reach that I can't I can't do that so I always set mine to 12 because I know I'm going to at least read that um one book a month if it's not a book club pick you know at least um but anyways I use my goodreads you can actually pull up your challenges to see how many books you've read um okay so I just kind of scroll through my mm-hmm. picks and then I can see I know it's hard to see okay no I, I usually do between 10 and 12 but this year I'm already at like 40 I'm like oh my gosh yeah <laughs> see, that's did, the influence I, that's the influence of this group man I'm telling you it's I did 36 I said three a month and I'm on number 30 I finished Will was number 35 oh I'm on 32 yeah. that's crazy I was um I don't know if y'all use uh story graph <laughs> mm-hmm. someone had posted in the group so over. I so I started and actually was, I was looking at it today and you can go month by month and it'll tell you like how many books that you read. So I started off with like five in January, then like four, four, three. And then like when my grandfather passed in May, it was like one, one, one. So I'm actually surprised that I'm at 32 right now, considering that mm-hmm. I had three months of books where I just read one book. Yeah. I'm going to have a hard time. Opal and Nev, like Kindred, so Seven Kindred. Days in June, Blackout. I know what's not going to be on my top 10. <laughs> what? Life after death. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh do you remember how hyped we were? The other day. <laughs> how hyped we were to read that? Oh, it was awful. <laughs> Black Girl Call <laughs> Home. That was another one. Yeah, that was good. Aftershocks, Black Buck, Aftershock Jessica, like, Yellow Wife. Yellow Wife. That's that why I was good. saying, after, like, Aftershocks was another good memoir that I read this year. Like, I've read a lot of good memoirs this year. Uh, Key Essay Lemon, I read heavy this year. So like, oh yeah. Damn, I'm going to have a hard time. Did we read Misty Copeland's book as a group? Mm -mm. Well, how did I read that one? I don't remember. (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't us but oh she was a, she was you a, were cheating she, on us I Look, was right. on Somebody else. she was the guest speaker she was the keynote speaker at a conference i went to in january so i read the book before the conference okay beforehand yeah okay now i'm like wait a minute how did i read this <laughs> yeah then gabrielle that. union's book white smoke was pretty good yeah it's gonna be tough mm-hmm. a lot of good reads this year but we shall see. Anywho, we are over time. Let me go catch the Real Housewives real quick. <laughs> have a good uh, one, ladies. Happy yeah, y'all have a good holidays. Good happy night. New Year. Yes. Bye. Happy yeah. holidays for sure, because we won't see you again until January. Mm-hmm. So, well, some no. of us will be on the, um, the, the, the movie. Oh, yeah. The movie. We'll yeah. see. Right. The 19th. Right. We'll see where my right. mind is That's at. True. Thank <laughs> you, folks. Yes, 19th. All right, I'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye. Bye.